Hey guys, Mechanic CG here, and welcome back to another episode of Forza Motorsport 2. Today is episode number 50. If you guys do enjoy the content, then be sure to leave a like, as it really does help with the YouTube algorithm at the moment. Feel free to subscribe, drop a follow on Twitch, and hopefully you enjoy the content. This video was streamed live on Twitch. Come watch us live with the link in the description. All right, so we're now moving on to the Class R4 World Trophy, starting off with Sunset Peninsula, Miguelo, Sebring, Silverstone, Suzuka, and then finishing off with Laguna Seca. This is our first championship with six events, and this is the most that we'll ever do in a championship in this game. Six events is pretty much the most, uh, which is better than the 10 that we ended up with uh, Forza Motorsport 1. But let's get going. We're taking the GT3 Cup car. Let's go. All right, here we go. Race number one of six. Literal hell. I hate driving this car. It's so unstable. The good thing about later Forza games is they actually have a lot more, um, like, settings options to actually cater the game to your needs a lot more bing 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 oh really messed that corner up there Yeah, so Gran Turismo's obviously suffering a little bit. Forza's suffering. But the prob... <laughs> Here's the thing. Forza is the only accessible racing game at the moment. Because there's too many games that are straight up arcade. You've then got Project Cars 3 that sort of tried to attempt that, but it was shit. Or you've got games that are just too ridiculously simulation, like a set of Corsa, which is fine, but there's no easy accessible game out there other than Forza Motorsport now that has a decent handling model that works. Even WRC 10, right, a rally game which isn't ultimately simulation, has some form of sim feel to it that makes it difficult for new people to play. The only two contenders that have some... and I, Even Gran Turismo has started to sway more towards the simulation side. Which makes it a lot more challenging now for people to pick up Gran Turismo and just play it. It's a lot more difficult than it used to be. On like, you know, GT4, GT3. GT2 was a pain in the ass to play. I'm not even going to discuss that. But when you compare it to like, the likes of, I don't know, Need for Speed. It's just too arcade that it's not... There's no simulation feel, so it doesn't feel like a racing game. It just feels like, you know, the Fast and Furious franchise. The only game that might even come close to it that's coming out soon is Test Drive Solar Crown. But it depends on how much they turn up that... where they put themselves on that slider. Because if they're using the similar engine to WRC, a similar handling model, which I wouldn't blame them, it's a solid handling model, that game might be more towards the simulation. Which, again, I wouldn't mind because a more simulation feel for an open world game is what we need at the moment. But it still begs the question of, is it accessible? So we are literally left with Forza. It's the only Simcade that exists anymore. And if Forza Motorsport 8 actually goes away from that, 
and becomes more simulation. I don't think that... I think the SimK genre will die out completely. I think it will die out. We'll only have simulation racing games or arcade racing games. We won't have an in-between. Especially open world. Like, open world racing games are heavily arcade based. If the new Test Drive Solar Crown is simulation, I'm not going to complain because it would be a good sim open world game. I love the idea of that. Because we haven't got one of them yet. Other than stuff like BeamNG, but BeamNG is an absolute ball ache. And there's no actual content for it. Other than that, we might be screwed. Like, Forza as we know it and racing games as we know it. May be gone. Let's be honest. So it's all down to how arcadey, how much of a Simcade Forza Motorsport 8 is going to be. As to whether the Simcade genre still exists. Because obviously the old Simcade games will still exist, but whether it will continue to exist beyond that. It's like old school 2000s drum and bass. That doesn't exist anymore. No one makes it. Drum and bass has moved on to a different kind of genre. It sounds different to what it used to. That still doesn't mean that that old drum and bass doesn't exist anymore. It's just old. It's There's no new s stuff like it coming out. Maybe one or two songs, but it's pretty much dead in the water. And that's going to be a very similar thing to what we see with Simcade racing games, guaranteed. It sucks. Sucks, Duke. Not bad. I just realised this is episode 50 as well, so exactly on episode 50 we start driving racing cars. How cool is that? Wobble. I weevil and I wobble and I don't fall down. Bollocks. Whew, that was close. We do have a substantial gap, but that's what happens when you turn it down to an easier difficulty. Like, this game is just ridiculous. Like, the time difference between easy and medium is like 40 seconds. That's a substantial difference. Which is why I prefer how the later games did their difficulty, because that way, if something was too difficult, you could turn it down and it, the difference would be about five seconds for a 10 minute race. Like, the difference wouldn't be substantial, but it ruins the experience. With this, there's three difficulties. Really fucking hard, hard, and way too fucking easy. That's sort of my difficulty options for me. Obviously, some people will say, like, ah, oh, this one's normal, this is really hard, this is impossible. You know. That's sort of how I see the difficulties of this game. And then most sport one, the difficulty options didn't even matter. It was just... Roll of the dice. And then each difficulty option was a multiplier 
Oh, you picked the easy option. Right, it's one times whatever this dice roll says. <laughs> oh, you've picked hard. Right, three times... Oh, look, three times six. Your difficulty level's 18. Good fucking luck. Like, that's how random Motorsport 1's difficulty was. Just horrendous. Oh, look. End of the race. Woohoo! Let's go to the next one. All right, here we go. Race number two. Rem, rem, rem. And we are off. Move out of the way. Move out of the way. Not bad. This is actually a uh, handling. F uh, it's a little bit too slidey around this track. I think for this entire uh, Forza franchise, I think we're doing um, controller only. And then when it comes to WRC. Um, I believe the plan is for the first six games plus power slide um, that it's controller and then seven, eight, nine, ten, and generations are going to be wheel gameplay. That is the belief that I am led to be doing. Not 100% sure yet because I haven't planned anything with that series but I am pretty much I, th I think I'm like 90% fully planned for this for the series I got a couple of little things I need to do uh, I need to finish the uh, Hot Wheels DLC so I know exactly what's to do on that because with the Horizon games you have to finish everything to know exactly what's there So pretty much the Falls of Horizon is just going to be complete every event. Then you're done. So it's going to be fairly short for the Horizon games. I think for the whole of this, it's just complete every event. But when it comes to um, Motorsport... No, Horizon 2 is complete every championship that's available. There's quite a few, so that's going to be a long game. Uh, and then I believe... Actually, I don't know how many championships there are. Yeah, I think Horizon 2 will probably take about four months. That's how big the game is. Quite a lot of stuff. But I might be able to shorten that down if I do longer videos for it. There is the possibility that I can make it longer. If I just fast travel everywhere. Cost me a lot in terms of uh, in-game credits, but could do that. But Horizon 1 is just complete all the races. Do all the showcases. Street races, stuff like that. Horizon 3, 4 and 5. Same story. Uh, three, I was planning on doing them all as a championship as well, so that they appear as completed, but can't be asked to do the championships along with it, so. Because that's just extra. Extra events, extra time at the end of the day.
Not bad. Bing, 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 Not bad. We looking good today. Today. Yeah. Is that Culture Shock songs finished? I can't be. Ah, there we go. I got music back. It was a long ass build up, that's what it was. in a little bit. Not bad though. Right, coming up to the final corner of the final lap. Is this race number two or race number three? I can't remember. I'm thinking it's still two. We'll find out once we're at the end of this, because if we're at 30 points, then hog. Three races done. If it says 20 points, then gutted. And if it says anything less than that, then uh, I'm severely concerned how I lost the position. <laughs> Wow. Woof. Woof, woof. A dog is mental. Not bad. Mm. 
And there we go. Not bad. Good race result for that, actually. I'm surprised that the uh, race car, actually, it's kind of slow. Uh, oh, it is only the second race. Gutted, mate. Fucking gutted. All right, here is uh, race number three. I think we finally established this is a third race. Uh, Sebring. Good old Pirelli sponsorships. There's so many different tyre sponsors in this game, which is kind of crazy. Because normally video games, they don't get multiple sponsors of the same... Obviously, like, these games are, like, showcases of cars, so cars will just want to be featured in them. Sometimes. Not all the time. Heh. <laughs> Toyota. Um... I kind of forgot that this was a full track. Cheers, phone. Do 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 do. Yeah, the current Samsung notification is the best that it's ever been. Like, the classic one we all know is the whistling one, the... Do -do 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 -do. I can't whistle the tune, but... Really loud, like... Yeah, that was... The one that everyone remembers is, like, the classic, the original. And in my opinion, was probably the second to worst. The worst one being, like, the one that they did in, like, 2019 or whatever, where it's like... Do -do 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 -do. Really depressing and sad and... Not bad. Ooh. Very bumpy through that section, actually. I'm really surprised, though, because these sort of, like, paving slabs are all fairly level. So, I'm kind of surprised at that corner. It's just extremely bumpy. Like, it even looks level around there. But it just completely unsettles the car through that section. No stability whatsoever. Especially when you take the curb like that. Jesus. There we go. Not bad. Auto Quest. Really cool cars. <laughs> That is amazing. Debring is such a large area of a racetrack. It's such a large place. Like, you look at the inside of there, that's all full of vans. Like you could probably get a good few thousands of people, like tens of thousands of people, just in campers through there. And you've got the entire the inside section there where none of the roads even go near. There you go. More RVs on the inside there. Like, I know this is definitely like a 24-hour track. And they, like, have long-winded events. So people would sort of need to stay and sleep and all that. But, like, there's so much space for people to just be. And there you go. Bumpy again. It looks flat. That's what confuses me. But there's just bumps everywhere, apparently. Well, not apparently, it's quite clear that that was bumpy. But like, why? 
Oh, come on, stay, stay on the track. Not bad. We're looking good. There we go, result. This thing is really enjoyable round Seabrain. How did, How does that even happen? Unbelievable. I shall be speaking to my lawyer about this. <laughs> Not bad. I'll be there for you. Ah, oh, they're still solid walls. When was it that they actually made the tire walls, like, destructible? I know Motorsport 6 was very well known when they added Rio that the tire walls would just get absolutely obliterated by the AI. Like, there would be tires everywhere for Rio. But yeah, like, when was it that they added that? I don't think it was any of the um, 360 titles. Private Motorsport 5. Uh... 
Not bad. Jesus, the way we went through those corners there was really solid, and then that final corner just ruined it. I'll be there for you. There you go, saving game data. Not bad. I will take that. All right, here we go. Silverstone. Yeah, I had to uh, get rid of the hair. It was uh, ridiculously long. Oh, squeezing through the middle there. Lovely. Get out the way, Viper. Yeah, uh, I basically, ah, uh, I've messed that corner up. Yeah, I've been growing, I've been growing it all out, like the beard, the hair, and everything for quite a while. I wanted to get a haircut sooner. Could be bothered, but the beard was really long, and that was what I wanted to grow out. Um. And then I basically got forcefully told to have a haircut. And then, against my will, had my beard shaved. Which really fucking pissed me off big time. But, you know. Whoa! Oh, Jesus. <laughs> he spun out. <laughs> Serves him right. Oh. Okay, I've gone into the side of that thing. Z06 surprisingly doing really well around this track. But yeah, so I've got another month with the beard um, before it comes off completely. Uh, well, maybe two months. Uh, a month and a half. Because, um, start of September, it's all coming off. The beard's gone. And it'll be gone up until... Um... A little bit. Chat's been extremely dead the past hour. But, uh, we got, uh, Gimme here, so... Um, but yeah. What's it called? Start of September. Cheers, fuck you. Start of September, getting rid of it. And then sort of mid-October, I'll start to grow it back again. Because I'm going away for two weeks holiday, so going to enjoy that. Wow, 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 wow. bad.
I hate driving this car, though. There's just too much weight towards the rear. And for a race car, that's a recipe for disaster. But it's got Red Bull logo. It's got Red Bull design, so you have to take it. Because Red Bull... Anything that's, like, Red Bull designed or, um... Monster Energy designed is, like, my kryptonite. I will always... Always pick it. Every single time, without fail. Which, the good thing about um, Motorsports 1, 2, 3, and 4, and Horizon 1, uh, all of the vehicles don't actually have designs for them. Um, I don't know when we get to Motorsport 5 whether the designs will be working, but not 100% sure. Aaron, what is up? Welcome. How are you today? Hopefully you're having a good day. Not bad. Don't forget, chat, if we fill up that follower's goal today, I'll be gifting three subs out to chat. So feel free to share the stream out with friends. Feel free to shout out with anyone you know. See if we can hit that follower goal. We need 25 d during the stream. We've got 10 hours to do it. That's two every hour. Two and a bit every hour. I'm doing good, Aaron. Thank you very much for asking. Where is it you're on a vacation to? This is a tune. Malmo. Ah, fair enough. It's quite... Sounds like quite a nice place. Is it like a hot weather place or is it cold? I assume it'd be quite warm because heat waves and shit are going around at the moment. A little bit of a corner cut there. neck is so stiff. Welcome to the panic room. Don't see you. Welcome to the panic room. It's at the bottom of Sweden. Ah, fair enough. Ah, yeah, it rings a bell now. Bum, bum, bum. I really want to go back to Sweden, but, you know, we haven't 
Wow. Nan and that's been twice. Maybe three times since I last went. Every time I ask, oh, can I go too? No. I always get told no. And I'm like, fucking gutted. <laughs> I'm obviously not going to go on a trip on Sweden on my own. I don't really know much about the place. I've been lost. To be fair, I'm lost when I go on a holiday anywhere. Let's be honest. Hey, hey, hey. Welcome to the panic room. Bing, bing, bing. Yeah, let's go. Woohoo. Resolve. 40, uh, 40 points. Let's get going to the next one. We've got two races left to go. I want to do the race, not finish it. There we go. Much better. Um... Lately, I've not really been up to much. Um, just sort of focusing on Twitch and actually trying to... <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah, I've been focusing on Twitch, trying to get my YouTube back up and running again. Um, it's going all right. We're obviously doing the uh, Falls of Mega series, which is what we're recording now. So this, is all, this all gets recorded for YouTube. Ah! Um, and so far, our current progression is 7.7% .7 complete for all of the Forza games, which is uh, impressive. But when we start getting into the bigger ones, like Motorsport 3 and 4 are a huge chunk of that progression, as well as Horizon 2 and Horizon 3, apparently. Horizon 3 has got 297 points towards it, but... Those are individual events rather than championships like the other ones, so our progression is going to look slow and then it's going to speed up dramatically, slow down and then just exponentially grow. Oh no, the poor simp boss. He's been prodded with a twig. <laughs> We've gotten rid of about 5,000 health points in about two months, so maybe by the end of the year we might finally kill Sir Fallen. We do have some new uh, channel point redemptions as well um, for 50,000 channel points. Um, you can get yourself a free gifted sub for a month. And for 250,000 channel points, you actually get um, six months worth of sub to my channel for free. So you don't even have to pay a penny. So if you've got channel points, save them up, use them for that. Uh, yeah, Sir Fallen's been pretty decent. He's been working pretty hard with uh, his streaming community. Woo! I think Mabel's here. Just a slight inkling. Seven seconds faster than our last lap, which makes sense because we have the speed on the straight. Not that kind of speed.
played The Forest. I've heard of it, not played it. Um, I know a lot of people are raving about it lately. Sort of got a spike in popularity because it's been out for like, what, two, three years now? Maybe even more? But people have just, like, it's gotten a surge in popularity lately. So, uh, I've been more than willing to, uh, eight years. Okay, yeah, I was completely wrong. But, yeah, it had, like, a surge a couple of years ago, like, three or four years ago. And then it's just had another one recently. I assume it's because they update the game and add new content and people are like, wow, new shit, let's go. <laughs> I just closed my eyes. Whoa. Okay, we're drifting. We're drifting. Oh, they got a part two coming out. Fair enough, that makes sense. Yeah, as soon as anyone announces a part two for a game that has some popularity, it's always gonna spike back up again. That's just how gaming works. Which actually reminds me, uh, I've got no clue what Naughty Dog are doing. But they are really trying to fuck up their franchise like Rockstar did. I mean, you look at GTA and stuff like that. People really don't care too much for GTA because of the fact that they've just handed GTA 5 all this old content. And the hype around Grand Theft Auto. Completely spun the car out. The hype around Grand Theft Auto is so much lower than it used to be. Like, when GTA 3, 4, 5... All of them were coming out. San Andreas. There was always a lot of hype. Because they would come out and then a new game would be announced. And then a new game would come out. Naughty Dog is doing the exact same thing with their franchises. They're doing the same with The Last of Us and Uncharted. I mean, you look. Okay, they can outsource their development, which is what they've done, to a third party to do the PC version. That's understandable. Get a PC version, that's good. But they have... Three versions of The Last of Us now. Or they're going to have. They made The Last of Us on PS3. And then a couple of years later, they made The Last of Us Remastered. Right, so they remastered that game for PS4. Right? They then made... Uncharted 4, right? They've now remastered... I'm not sure whether they remastered Uncharted 1, 2, and 3 before Uncharted 4 or after. But they've done that. So that basically, Uncharted 1, 2, and 3 has a remake already. Well, not a remake, a remaster, but still. And then you've got... Uncharted 4 has now come out with a remake for PS5. Like a remastered version. So, basically, all the Uncharted have two remasters. Um, and also that extra Uncharted 4 game as well with the female characters in. And then, they've now announced that they're doing The Last of Us Part 1. Which is basically the first Last of Us actually now renamed Part 1 because, you know, they have a Part 2. But for PS5, it's going to be remade, redone, but it's the same story again. So that's three times that they've released The Last of Us 1. I'm just confused. Because, I mean, the last game that Naughty Dog released was back in 2016, no, 2019, I think it was with The Last of Us 2. The time before that was 2016. But since then, we, we should probably get a new, either Last of Us Part 3, though that doesn't make sense because they've just done two. So it should be Uncharted 5's turn. No, we're getting another Last of Us. 
And I kid you not, I would not be surprised if they go, hmm. Here's Uncharted 1, 2, and 3, but for the PS5, complete remakes. I would not be surprised if they did that. Because they're just not... By all means, making a game look better is a good idea. I like it when they make a game look better. But I also like seeing the progression of how the games have evolved. You're basically modifying your history to make a game look better. And again, I've got no problem with that because it is cool. But that's at the expense of developing your stories and continuing the stories. It's messing with their entire studio and a lot of people are fed up with it. Yeah. Like, I think it would have made more sense if they didn't remaster for the PS4. I don't know. Like, The Last of Us Part 1 doesn't need to exist. We don't need a PS5 version. We already have a PS4 remaster, which runs at 60 frames a second, which runs pretty solid. We've got a Last of Us Part 2, which runs at 60, I believe. Why do we need a third Last of Us 1? Like, at that point, it's pointless. It's like if Forza came out with Forza Motorsport 4 remastered for the Xbox Series X. Okay, yeah, that's cool. We've got a higher quality version of a game that we all enjoyed because of how the gameplay was and how the handle it was and all that. And then five years later, they're like, here's Forza Motorsport 4 Remastered 2. Sorry, why are we doing that? Like, it's dumb. But, but more money. <laughs> that is true. That is true. They're just thinking about the money at the moment. All right, here we go. Another race. Is it? The question is though. There's been some leaks already for Horizon Five, and I haven't actually discussed this on stream because these leaks didn't come out until like I think it was either on the day that the Hot Wheels DLC came out or the day before. Um, but apparently someone did some form of deep dive on internal game files. You know how they do it on PC. They just dive in, figure out the files. And apparently, word for word, the word Star Wars came up. Which concerns me a little bit and excites me. Because Forza... Well... A Forza Horizon 5 DLC for Star Wars would be cool because it'd be an awesome out-of-this-world experience, pun intended. The map would be phenomenal, but how would you be able to... You know, like, the cars, it wouldn't fit in. But a lot of people are saying that is potentially... Uh, whether they're just bringing Star Wars cars at some point... But there were some rumours about that. Potentially pointing to the second DLC. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know yet how I feel about that. Yeah, it could be. Could be some car mods. I do also have another feeling that um, Forza Motorsport 8, or the new Forza Motorsport, is going to get delayed again. Because Forza made a huge deal of showcasing it at the uh, Xbox Showcase and saying that all of these games are going to be available within the next 12 months. 
but then they also made a huge deal to show at the end screen that these games may get delayed. Something tells me that they just, like, wanted to showcase Forza to show that they are moving forward with the new Forza. But they know that it's not going to be out. Like, Forza has never released before, like, September, I don't think. Except for Motorsport 1, I believe, came out in, like, May 2005 or something. Yeah, it, it's good to see them working on it. But I don't want them rushing it either. There also is the chance that I... Obviously, I'm doing this Forza Mega Series, but there is the potential that um, I won't do the new Motorsport. It depends how the game is structured. Because if it's structured similar to the old motorsport games, where they're like events, that's fine. Even like up to Motorsport 7, if it's structured like that, that's fine. I can do that. But the thing that has me concerned about the new Forza Motorsport is that it's going to be a live service thing where they're going to have like cycling events. Like they'll have event lists that will cycle every week. And you will just complete them. That's something that I'm concerned about. And obviously you complete the events, you get limited time cars or stuff like that. But I don't think there's going to be a full-on career mode with it. It doesn't point that way. Because it also doesn't make sense why they're renaming it. And sort of refreshing and just calling it Forza Motorsport. Because Forza Motorsport implies that that's like a new series, a new franchise. We're starting from scratch, which by all means, that's fine. But you can't then go and make Forza Motorsport 2, can you? Because you've already got Forza Motorsport 1, which already is confusing enough the fact that they're calling it Forza Motorsport. But the fact that they're then going back, if they then make a second one and call it Motorsport 2, which is what we're playing right now. It's just going to confuse everyone. Wait, Sport 3. Oh, that's going to confuse everyone. So I really think they've got to call it Motorsport 8. And just continue with that. Because calling it Forza Motorsport. Nah. Not going to work. But it is very good to see that they are working on it. Whoa! A little bit under see there. After this one, I'm going to run down and grab a drink. Doom, doom, doom. Doom, doom, doom. See, I understand why it's called Forza Motorsport, because Forza obviously is... <laughs> See, Motorsport makes the most sense, obviously calling it Forza Motorsport. Call it Motorsport 8. Or rename it. Forza Apex. Have something like that. Forza Apex. The new Forza Motorsport series. Kill off Motorsport. Don't do any more towards Motorsport. But instead, call it Forza Apex. And Apex can be about all sorts of... Because obviously you've got Forza Motorsport 6 Apex. So it's not like the name hasn't already been used as part of Forza before anyways. But then you call it that and it tells people that it's a new series. And you can call it Apex because, you know, if they add in dirt racing, ice racing, stuff like that, call the Apex Battle Royale. No thanks. <laughs> but like they could add more different types of motorsports you could have nascar you could have indycar you could have touring car formula one wrc 
WRX. I think that's what it's called. World Rally Cross. Um, Baja Racing. Dakar. There's so many different types of motorsport out there, but Forza only ever seems to focus on circuit racing. Adding Forza physics and vehicles into Apex Legends. Sounds like a plan. No, but, like, it would make more sense than completely renaming it as Forza Apex or Forza something else. Because we've obviously got Horizon. That's the subgenre. You have Forza Motorsport. That's the subgenre of the Forza franchise. Make a new subgenre. Start something new. But don't go back to Forza Motorsport. Like, it's just confusing. Yeah, exactly. The only thing I'm worried about is if Forza does like a live service thing. Um, it would obviously be a good idea in the long run. Especially for like Game Pass because they just have to... They'll just permanently renew their licenses just keep offering these cars in the game and if a license can't be renewed they just stop selling it in the auto show problem solved but again the problem with that is that the game won't it just won't progress it won't develop it won't be new content once you finish it And there won't be a... What, the thing that I enjoy about completing a game is that I know I've completed it. And I can say I've completed it. With stuff like The Crew 2 and games like that, I haven't enjoyed them because I haven't been able to say I've done it. I've completed it. There's no physical way to say you've done it. Because they're constantly adding content. They're constantly cycling content. Like, my, my definition of completion is doing all the events. Saying that I've done them all and I've won them all. And that was the problem I found with Horizon 4. They were constantly adding new content and cycling events. And it makes sense. But you can't say you've completed the game at that point. Like, by all means, releasing... I don't care if it's more expensive for them to release a new Forza Motorsport every two years than then release one, but I've always got... I, I will never complete it. It's just an instant turn-off for me when it comes to video games. Like, all these older Forzas, I know when they're completed. But when it's come to some of the Horizon games, it's been like... My completion, what I call completed, is probably only about 10% of the actual game. But because there's no actual official, like, completion statistic for Horizon 5 and 4, it's just a ball ache. Shut up, Bigsby. Yeah, so... It's definitely going to be a pain in my ass trying to do this series when it comes to the Horizon stuff, but... And the amount of people that's like, well, you can't 100% this game. I don't give a shit. Fuck off. <laughs> oh! Oh yes, I'm very happy now. I'm very happy. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy, be sure to leave a like, comment down below and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Peace out. <laughs>